he faced the Luftwaffe when they were all coming in that cloud? Oh, right? yeah, that, the German, or one day, one mission that I was on, I have a book written about that one mission by both German and American. It was the first full daylight raid on Berlin. And when I say Berlin, we weren't bombing the cities, we were bombing targets around the edge of Berlin. So that day, they estimated that our formation, which was 94 miles long, was attacked by 600 enemy airplanes on our way in and our way out. That day, I think I saw about half of them, <laughs> they would come at us in a line of about 10 to 12, and they would be higher than we were and coming at us head on. So this line of airplanes, German airplanes coming at us head on, when they got within range and those guns started twinkling, oh, that was so frightening. Now in the cockpit, since we were flying tight formation, it was hard work. So we spelled each other about every 15 or 20 minutes. So on my time off, I could see all of this. When I was flying the airplane, I could not see what was going on outside. But on my time off, I could see all these airplanes coming at us. That was scary. Then when we were in heavy flak, the explosions, sometimes it was, they were all around us, the, the explosions. If one was close to the airplane, I could feel the shock of, of the explosion on the airplane. And I knew that we had gotten a lot of holes at that very moment, because when that shell exploded, it sent pieces of shrapnel in all directions, and some of it's going to hit me. I never got home in 28 missions without holes in the airplane. So always got some holes, sometimes a lot of them. The flak was intense over the, all of the target areas, very intense and quite accurate generally. So we were getting heavy fire and taking damage, all of us. The whole formation was receiving damage when we were over the target area. So there was, flak was all over Europe. All of Europe was under German control except for Switzerland. And so anywhere we went, we were in Germany. And uh, on the western side, France, Holland, Belgium. Uh, on the eastern side, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Austria, all of them. All of them are Germany. So wherever we went, we were under fire. I tried to bomb an aircraft factory in Poland three times. We were, that was our target, three times. We never got there any of the three times. We always ran into trouble when we got into Poland weather-wise. And we had to be able to see our target to bomb with the Norden bomb site. So <clears throat> all three times we bombed our secondary target, which was uh, Rostock, Germany. So we bombed there all three times. <laughs> so. Posen, that aircraft factory never got touched at Posen, Poland. They were still making airplanes when the Russians advanced that far. So the flak and the, the fighters were both formidable. The German, we were bombing a lot of aircraft factories and shooting a lot of them down. So we were eliminating or attempting to eliminate the Luftwaffe in two ways, bomb their factories to stop production of airplanes and shoot them out of the air. This one book that I have says in there, the German made a statement that from the 1st of January, 1944, till the end of April, 1944, just four months, the Luftwaffe lost over 1,000 fighter pilots. Many of them were their skilled and, and, uh, uh, and well-trained 
people. So they began putting up junior birdmen without a lot of training. Uh, and 